Hey guys, what is up? Dave here and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is the start of a very, very long series and a long promised series to the channel that I've been meaning to get to, but oh my god, just... I suck. I don't really have an excuse for not starting this yet. Um, it's the lift tech tutorials. Getting started with lift tech. Uh, the things you need to mod lift tech, the things you need for, you know, pretty much anything lift tech for modding any game that's based on lift tech Jupiter Enterprise, which are games like Sudden Attack, Crossfire, Combat Arms, Heat Online, um, Nolf 2, Contract Jack, whole nine yards. So I want to give a huge shout out to the small community that we've started over on Lith Archive, and I also want to give a shout out to lith.tech and lith faq because they're being big supporters as well as lith archive and wanting to just build up a community with our sites with that um lith tech actually has a link to lith tech right uh lith archive right on their homepage, which is freaking awesome <coughs> excuse me somebody made <laughs> beaver creek i'm sorry i'm still this cold will not leave me that I have. Somebody made Beaver Creek for AVP2? Oh my god. That's amazing. Oh, that's such a good protein shake. Anyway, lunch. I figured I'd make my lunch now while I'm recording this because talking kind of sucks. But anyway, let's get into the tutorial. So today we are going to start at the very first thing you should do if you want to be a lift tech modder. Jesus Christ. Why does talking have to be so hard? So what you're going to first want to do is download the lift tech Jupiter enterprise game engine. You can find it here on the mega link right here. Just download the zip file You can find it on the download library page on lith archive, which I will get a link to this page made on the home screen of lith archive soon probably after I record this video. I recommend using the mega links before a non-file just because a non-file is a little bit of a slower download, but so mega is a little bit faster. And plus you can also dig through these folders, which <coughs> I feel so bad that I don't remember who uploaded all this stuff, but when I remember I'll give them a shout out in some way obviously and you know forever grateful for them uploading all this stuff. So I already have it downloaded, obviously. We're going to go through the installation process, which is very easy. Just start the... <coughs> oh my god, I'm trying. I swear to god. <sighs> start the freaking thing. Um, I'm putting it on my external hard drive, which does sound a little bit weird, but it's so I can have it anywhere I go or transfer it to my laptop very easily. Oh, wrong folder. And there we go. Getting this installed. It's your simple standard install of a program. But what does this come with, you might be asking. So this comes with a lot of stuff. Like everything you're ever going to need. Um, there's the actual Tron 2.0 uh, or Nolf 2 source code that you get with this. You get all the documentation, the actual engine source code, all the tools source code, <coughs> the game source code for Nolf 2, all the libraries, sample projects, tools, um, and a ton of other stuff. Like it, it's it's insane how much stuff you get. It's a full fledged game engine. This isn't obviously it's not like Unity. It's very old. This game engine I believe was well this version of it was released I believe in somewhere between ninety nine and two thousand three. So similar time frame as like Nitto thirteen twenty challenge for those of you who pay attention to that stuff. Um. 
but yeah we're getting this install I'm gonna pause this while it installs and we're gonna go from there once it's done installing we'll actually dig through the files I'll explain everything and we'll go from there all right so we're done with the install finally um, that only took a couple minutes and here we are finally back in with the installation so first off as soon as the installation finishes you get this page that also explains pretty much everything um, this will go over things uh, in fairly good detail so powering Nolf 2, Tron 2.0 and numerous other games developed in North America Asia and Europe, Jupiter is a comprehensive set of tools and technologies that gives developers wanting to push the envelope the power to create high performance immersive games for PC and Xbox. You can also do PS2. Um, so what's new? Jupiter is now in support of Visual Studio 2003, so 7.1, and 2002 version 7 is no longer supported. I will be doing a tutorial on setting up Visual C++.NET 2003. I do have the installer for this. That'll be one of the next tutorials. Um, pretty much the first, I'd say 5 to 10, is going to be just the stuff you need to install. Um, and then after that is when we actually get into modifying and creating. Uh, the, D, the DirectX 9 effect files introduces new effects shader system. Maya 7 is supported. Direct Show Video Playback is supported. Linux server support. And Jupyter Release History for everything can be found here. Which, if you right click that, it brings up a new page. Build 69 all the way through 56 on what's updated and fixed and changed. There's a lot. <coughs> System requirements you can see here. I've actually never looked. So all Jupyter Editions XP 2000 is unsupported as a development platform, so it has to be Windows XP, C++ 2003, uh, DirectX 9.0 C Retail, and DirectX 9.0 C February 2006 or greater. We use June 2010 um, when we do pretty much everything. Maya 7.0 through 4. 3DS Studio Max 7.0 to 5 with Creator Studio 4, 3DS Max Studio 4 with Character Studio 1.2, uh, and Bink Video is supported as well. Enterprise only, which is what we have, all the way down to 4 and all that. And then just some environment variable stuff. And then from here, require model and world reprocessing. If you are in Jupiter build 68 or earlier you have to do all this shit um, documentation is here samples and tutorials which I'll go over this because that definitely helps you learn the engine very well content plugins there's plugins for 3ds max there's plugins for Maya and Photoshop which those are found in these folders and this explains what they are and what they do and then building the engine from the command line. So open a DOS window, do all this stuff, how to use 7.1, <coughs> running the samples, running NOLF2, uh, to debug with Visual Studio, debugging NOLF2, launching the game with dedit, and all the different components. Samples, so there's so many. Um, the one that I'm definitely going to use a lot and we're slowly going to try to create our own game off of is Seal Hunter. Um, it's a good starting base as the multiplayer code is all already there. Just have to add things like, uh, you know, whatever you want to turn the game into. So if I wanted to make a racing game, I'd have to transfer all the info for like car horsepower, tire grip, car torque, car weight. Or if I wanted to make another... FPS game, you know, all the stuff to deal with that. Um, some model stuff and some object stuff. So that's the fun of that little web page. So, first off, there's the development folder. This is Nulf 2 completely untouched um, with full source code access, so you can actually debug the game. It's a lot of fun to mess with. I'll definitely get into. Uh, 
modding this and doing some fun stuff with it. Although, although, I don't, if you don't think you're going to need to change the actual source code of the game, I'll have a video eventually on installing Contract Jack, the full version of the game, and getting the source code for uh, Contract Jack, because I believe you get it with the installation. Um, because Contract Jack has a lot of bug fixes that this game does not. So, for example, we had a T-posing problem when we were trying to create TPS and caps, um, where if you were running around, the animation of what the other player was doing just didn't work. So they would just be T-posing running around the map, um, and you couldn't tell if they were shooting at you or looking at you or what was going on. And we never quite figured out how to fix that bug. Um, I'm sure Radeon on the Lith Archive uh, Discord has a fix for that, but as of this moment, I don't know the fix for it personally. Um, so that's the development stuff of that. Then there's all the DirectX stuff for 2006. Like I said, I recommend using June 2009 or 2010. I think it's 2009, actually. I might have said 10 earlier. All the documentation, like I was saying, there's LithCheck, the API stuff, the dev guide. This will be your best freaking friend. Um, there's design specs, all the white paper stuff, the effects shader system stuff. Then in the engine folder, this is, oh my god, my cat. Hold on a second. Anyway, so this is like the engine build stuff, some client effects. This is just like the releases and runtime stuff. Not all that crazy important. Source code for client effects, source code for libraries, runtime stuff, SDK and tools. This is going to be a fun one because I definitely want to learn how to modify the dedicated server that comes with, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, the game. Definitely want to learn to modify that. So the server app, which is right here. I want to heavily modify this for use with TPS and caps and stuff like that. Uh, or maybe even make a universal with new stuff applied to it, new choices of options. You know, whatever. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. I have ideas for it. I just suck at explaining them. Uh, then there's the libraries, obviously, for stuff that you might need. There's the Linux stuff. All the sample stuff. So there's, like, audio testing stuff. There's the networking. Like I was saying, there's the Seal Hunter stuff right here, which Seal Hunter is fantastic. <laughs> Find game, host game, quit. We're going to quit. I have never actually tried to run that multiplayer, but I will eventually get on that and run it multiplayer and try to set up a server for people to just run around. Um, I definitely want to go in and make a bigger map for it uh, with more spawns and stuff like that. There's so much that we could do with Seal Hunter that would be so much fun. I just have to, you know, get it everything set up, give you guys the videos on setting it up, and we'll go from there. But Seal Hunter is going to be a good chunk of tutorials, I can definitely feel. And then obviously there's your tools folder for everything you're ever going to need. We're only missing a couple things. So if you look over on lith.tech, um, it's actually like right here. There's the new model unpacker for LTB to LTA. I know you can't read that on here because it's in another language. I'm not going to try to guess which one because I'll insult somebody. But you can also get this on MPGH, I believe. And I think we have it on Lith Archive, but I don't remember. <laughs> I'll let you guys know eventually. But uh, I believe it's here <coughs> somewhere. Or at least I'll get it here, whatever, you know, whatever. I'll definitely get this link on the homepage, though. But that's pretty much the installation process of the LithTech Jupyter game engine. I know this is starting basic with literally just how to install a program. And I know that's how these first few videos are going to be. And I apologize for that up front. For those of you who actually want to, you know, really get in, get the modding tutorials on how to, like, make maps and de-edit or modify animations and model edit or 
make custom render styles for like different wall hack effects and stuff like that um obviously that's you know neither here nor there that's a ways down the road you got to have stuff set up first so hope you guys enjoyed tutorial number one i will make a playlist for this and everything um i can't give a firm schedule on these tutorials for when each one's going to release just because you know i have a two-year-old son uh it's my girlfriend and i's third anniversary uh her birthday is coming up just general work and you know illness as you can tell with this video my voice still doesn't like to say words without being interrupted by a cough every 14 words so be that as it may i will get these videos made i am sticking to it because 2020 i want to build up with archive it feels like it's something important to do because this game engine has so much potential that people kind of just ignore it um and i feel like it doesn't deserve to be ignored yes it's old as you can see 2006 is when these files were created and <coughs> uh <laughs> yeah <sighs> some of these wow this is old but uh you know hey it's still a perfectly viable game engine and we'll definitely learn some stuff together uh i'll get the tutorials done up on at least the setup within the next two months i'd say just because there's a lot of different programs i'm giving myself a big time window also because i don't want to flood you guys with just these videos because not everybody's a lith tech lover so hope you guys understand we'll get lith archive up and running with all these tutorials as well and i'll talk to you guys later i hope you guys enjoyed the video peace out